check that last line without an aid of a machine. This is going to be the only topic all year where you are not allowed to use a calculator when you're demonstrating mastery of the subject. You got to be able to compute basic integer operations with low numbers without a calculator. Now this is actually a middle school skill so you should have seen it before last year and the year before and maybe even before that. I'm listing here the standard rules that middle school teachers tend to have you try to memorize and then use with integers. This is an exhaustive list. This is what you do if you have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Subtraction, keep switch switch, means keep the sign of your first number, switch subtraction to addition, and then switch the sign of your second number. Now, I don't like memorizing lists of rules, so I'm going to offer an alternative method for thinking about integer problems, and I have even more alternative methods that I can share with you if that one doesn't work for you either. One way or the other, though, you've got to be able to accurately compute with integers. When I was in middle school, I told myself a story and fit every integer problem into that story. So it starts out with a couple symbols. We've got plus signs being crossed roads. We've got, we've got negative numbers and positive numbers which represent uh, groups, opposite groups. So the groups that I chose were thieves being negative numbers and soldiers being positive numbers. For example, negative 5 would represent 5 thieves and positive 8 would represent 8 soldiers. There's a wizard with a wand. His wand represents subtraction. Uh, and he does basically one thing. He casts only one spell, and that is a spell that switches allegiance. So if he casts the spell on thieves, then they would switch to sh soldiers. And if he casts the spell on soldiers, then they would switch to thieves. So the wizard handles all subtraction problems. And then for multiplication and division, multiplication and division are different spells that are cast on numbers. We'll look at some problems. I'll show you how it works if you can get into the story and it works better for you than memorizing a bunch of random rules. Uh, that would be good. This story also, though it seems more childish, actually gets more at the heart of what's happening with numbers when we're operating with integers, so it could help with conceptualizing uh, what's going on with the numbers. So here's how it works. All right, so addition problems, we have groups meeting at a crossroads. And if you have, for example, what's on the left, same kinds of groups meeting at the crossroads, you wouldn't expect anything bad to happen. You, in this top problem, you've got five soldiers meeting with 12 soldiers, and what's the result going to be? It's just going to be 17 soldiers. And if you on the bottom have three thieves meeting with four thieves the result is going to be you just have seven thieves there's no reason for signs to change or allegiance to change at all it's just a matter of counting who's there on the other hand on the right side those two problems we have opposites meeting at a street corner and what do you expect to happen if opposite groups, opposite teams meet? There's going to be problems, right? It's going to be bloodshed. So in this top problem, negative 2 plus 9, that's like two thieves meeting with nine soldiers. Who's going to win that fight that happens at the street corner? Of course, the soldiers are going to win. And down below, you've got only five soldiers meeting with eight thieves. Who's going to win that fight? Well, the thieves are going to win that one, but by how much, right? And that's where you end up with, in the lower right, thieves win, but only by three. They brought three more people, right? And on the top, you've got soldiers winning by seven. They brought seven more people. So anyway, every single addition problem with integers can be told in a story like this, 
right? And you don't need all the pictures to tell the story. You can just look at a problem and say, okay, I know my answer is going to be positive or negative based on who's showing up. And I know that my answers, that group is going to get reduced by an amount if we've got opposites showing up or or it's going to get increased by amount if we got same team showing up at the crossroads. For subtraction, we got a similar type of situation. You have two groups meeting, but remember this time the wizard is involved, the subtraction sign representing his wand, and it's pointed at the group to the right. And what does that wand do? What spell does it cast? It casts a spell and changes allegiance. So if we look at negative 13 plus negative 6, 13 thieves meeting with six thieves but the wizard is involved wand pointed at those six thieves they become six soldiers looking at the other problem we've got 17 thieves meeting with nine soldiers but the wizard's wand is pointed at those soldiers so he makes a change the soldiers become thieves right and after you make that change that subtraction change then you can just follow your addition rules Okay, after the wizard acts, now we just have our new groups. Thirteen thieves meeting with six soldiers. Who wins? Right, there's a fight there. Who wins? Thieves win, of course, but only by seven. And on the other side, we've got seventeen thieves meeting with nine thieves. There is no fight. There should be no diminishing of the numbers. It's just how many thieves showed up. Twenty-six. What are they? Thieves. Still thieves. So negative 26. All right, I'm going to tell you right now, most of you are going to prefer using the rules that your middle school teachers taught you for multiplication and division because they're nice and simple and cute. Same signs, positive answer, different signs, negative answer. Okay? However, do not use those rules for addition and subtraction. If you can understand the first part of the story and use that for addition and subtraction, and you want to use this for multiplication and division, that's fine with me. I'm still going to go through the rest of how the story works, only because, once again, it gets uh, more at the heart of what's actually happening when we multiply by negative numbers especially. Uh, but if you're, if you're getting right answers, you can either use the rules or the story. My thing is... You need to be able to get right answers without a calculator when I give you simple numbers and integer operations. Within mathematics and within this story, multiplication and division are fundamentally different from addition and subtraction. I don't have two groups meeting. If I'm going to multiply, it means that I'm going to have an action taken on a group. So, for example, in the top left, we have... A group one group of three soldiers and the action being taken on it is that group will be duplicated five times in the lower left so we've got one group of two thieves and what we're going to do with that is multiply that by seven duplicate that group seven times over right so this is how it would look pictorially and these would be our answers three times five three groups of five soldiers is 15 soldiers no sign changes. Seven groups of two thieves is 14 thieves. No sign changes. Negative two times seven is negative 14. All right, if I'm multiplying by a positive number, it means I'm just duplicating what I started with. Whatever I started with, I just get more of that. Same kind of thing when we're looking at division. I'll start with a group and then I'll act on that group. So up in the top, Right, starting with a group of eight soldiers, if I split that into four pieces, each piece will have two soldiers in it. So eight divided by four would be two. And down below, we've got starting with 12 thieves. If I split that into three equal pieces, each piece will have four in it. But what are they? Four thieves. So negative 12 divided by three is negative four. If I multiply or divide by a positive value, I keep the sign of whatever I started with. And then finally, if we're going to multiply or divide by a negative value, 
it's kind of like the mixing of magics. You have the multiplication or the division happening, but also the wizard's involvement. So there'll be a sign switch in that case. All right. Seven soldiers duplicated five times is 35 soldiers, but we have that negative to deal with. So final, final result is 35 thieves, right? And then if we've got starting with 15 thieves and split that by negative three, all right, splitting by three would take you down to five thieves, but that negative in the three causes a final change of allegiance. So you would end up with five, positive five, five soldiers. So anyway, multiplying or dividing by a negative value switches the sign of the group that you began with. Whatever you began with, you end up with the opposite. Anyway, that's a story that I used myself from the time I was in middle school and really did not ever struggle to get basic integer operation problems correct without a calculator. So, again, if you want to memorize a bunch of rules, you may. If the story helps for you to look at problems that way, definitely use it. Regardless of what you do, you have to have a method that works for you so that you can get correct answers consistently without a calculator to basic, simple integer problems.